Hey there. So something happened here at my house today and the last time it happened, it cost my wife and I a whole lot of heartache, a little bit of money, but the, the heartache was the big problem. Um, so it didn't happen today because I saw that it was going to happen and I was like, we're going to prevent this from happening and we're also going to do a little bit of filming. So that way, if it happens to you in the future, you can also prevent it from happening. So stay tuned. We're going to save you some money in the future, and we're also going to save you a little bit of heartache. All right, so here's what happened. Years ago, I was coming home. It was like a Friday. Today is also Friday. But it was like a Friday afternoon. It was kind of like middle of the breakup season. So right in like May, June time frame. I was exhausted after you know a long week of work and wanted to just relax. I get home and my neighbors are over at my house, which is something that happens. I mean, we've got kids, neighborhood kids come over and hang out, um, but there were more than, than typical and there were a lot of people over. And what we ended up discovering or what I ended up discovering is that our water filter or water sediment filter had exploded and all of the water from our coming in from our well had been just flooding our crawl space. So it was coming in actually through right here. And the, the water filter housing that is typically here had exploded and come apart and was just dumping water down into like through this little crack down here that you can't really see. Um, but it was dumping in through there and had filled my crawl space with thousands of gallons of water. And we had to take of course, we store all of our stuff in our crawl space. So we had to end up taking all of the you know, old baby clothes and uh, old baby toys and just old memory things, you know, that we had had stocked up, you know, over the years and had to fill our garage and, you know, bring all of these things out of our crawl space and go through all of these things, which ended up being kind of a good thing um, because we ended up finding a whole bunch of things that we didn't know that we had, you know, stored away. And we went through all that stuff and ended up having to throw away a whole bunch of old things that, that we didn't know that we ended up having. So that part aside, you know, we ended up getting rid of a lot of old things, um, a lot of old baby clothes that had gotten, you know, just soaked with, with gross um, well water that had been you know, just kind of sitting there. Um, and that was, it was really kind of painful because some of those things, you know, we brought our, our kids home, you know, in, in, you know, from the hospital and some of those baby clothes. Um, you know, we watched our kids play with, with some of those toys, but because of, of the water damage, we had to throw away all that stuff and, you know, all those memories, uh, had to be taken to the, the transfer station. So it was really tough. Um, and there was also some old electronics and stuff down there, like an old Blu-ray player. That Blu-ray player also had, you know, some, some speakers, you know, an old surround sound system. Uh, we lost a lot of things in, in that little bit of flooding. But like I was saying, all of those things could have been prevented had I just been paying attention to, you know, what my, my water filter or my water sediment filter housing and, you know, my home was kind of trying to tell me by, um, you know, just existing. So let's take a look at this system because the big issue that we ended up having was that because we were not treating it the right way and not maintaining it properly, we had actually caused the, the situation that we were, we were experiencing. So let's kind of see how I had caused my problem. First, let's talk about, you know, what this whole thing really is. Our water in, in Fairbanks North Pole is filled with sediment. So when we're drilling these wells, they're getting down, you know, pretty deep sometimes, but then the water is, is very, you know, very laden with sediment. Thinking about moving to Fairbanks? Well, click on the link below for my free relocation guide where I talk about top schools, top neighborhoods, and so much more. So in order for you to feel comfortable and you know really enjoy your experience drinking and, and living with the water that we have here in Fairbanks and North Pole, it first has to pass through a water sediment filter. So this is a pretty typical water sediment filter um, that, that we have. Um, this is one that, that fits the, the system that I have. You may see these in varying sizes, but this is the one that, that we've got. Um, pretty typical, like 20 micron filter is, is pretty much all that you need in most cases. Uh, however, if, if you are testing your water and you're like, oh man, um, I just, I really don't like this. You can absolutely take it into, you can pull a sample, take it into like Arctic Home Living, 
uh, and they will do a quick test for you um, and, and give you a really good idea of, of where you need to be dialing in your system or they can even come out and take a look at your system too. You can also pick up these water sediment filters at uh, Article Moving or, or Ferguson Plumbing too. Check these out. Um, when you are changing these though, they, they go in looking like this. Uh, they come out looking like this. So our water is very, very dirty before it gets filtered. So this is what the, the water sediment filter looks like. Um, now when my filter housing had exploded, this is more or less what it looked like. There was water just pouring out the, you know, out the, the doors of our garage and this filter housing was just kind of laying here. Um, now, um, the reason why this had broken was because of the damage to these little like ribs here um, had been caused by these little guys, not so little, but these channel lock pliers. So what ended up happening and these are like the biggest ones I was able to find. Uh, I picked these up at, um, I almost kind of don't want to tell you where I got these because uh, then you'll go out and get them and then you'll try to use them on your water, on, on this little housing here. And then you'll be in the same situation that I'm in. But I got these at Century Hardware on, uh, on Old Steese. But so anyway, I used those channel locks and I had used that to loosen this housing. And that is what caused this to explode. And that is exactly what happened today too. Uh, but I prevented the explosion and all of the water from filling up my crawl space and damaging all of my stuff by kind of forcing the explosion, if you will, because what had ended up happening was that this was so tight on the, the little attachment here for the, for the housing even with using the little pressure relief valve here, I still couldn't get it off. So I saw that it was going to explode. I forced the explosion and then I went out and went down to Ferguson on industrial at industrial and 30th uh, Ferguson plumbing supply there and picked up a new one. It was like 60 bucks for a new one and we'll be able to install it, you know, really, really quick. And I'll show you that too. Um, but I knew it was going to explode, went down there and got one and, or, and forced this to, to burst because it was going to anyway. So um, the big thing that you're gonna need if you're gonna end up doing these change outs, these water filter change outs kind of on your own, uh, you're gonna need a good like five gallon bucket um, and you want to shut off your water before you start doing it anyway. So you should have water coming in from your well to where your, your water sediment filter is. So shut off the water going to that if you, you can't really see mine, I guess, but I have a an, another valve here going to my water softener that's back here. So I shut that one off too. So that's isolated the water going to and coming out of the filter. So now it's completely shut off here. That's another way that I was able to keep all of the water from flooding all of my stuff is by just shutting it off right here. So I did that, exploded the filter or exploded the, the housing there and then went and got a new one. Um, now when you are installing these and when you're putting these on, one thing to, to know, a little pro tip that I, I got from a, a plumber a couple years ago when this happened, uh, is to lube up your O-ring. So these little rubber O-rings go in, um, and they sit just like, they sit just right in here. This little O-ring does. And if you put a little bit of Vaseline and just run it around this little O-ring, then it will keep this o-ring from drying out and cracking so that's pretty cool get all lubed up you don't need a lot i mean see we're just like it's not a whole bunch see it's not super lubed up we just drop it down in place see it's right in there and then we're there now the thing is Oh, it's a filter bowl. That's what it's called is a filter bowl, not a water sediment or water filter sediment housing, whatever I've been calling it. It's a filter bowl. Um, the instructions say hand tighten only. That's why I said, don't go out and buy these. I didn't want to tell you where to get these because if you use these to take this apart, you will explode your filter bowl. So don't use 
tools for this. Just use your hands, okay? So it goes on there. You put your, your water filter in. Make sure you twist it on the correct way. And there you go. Presto changeo. So to turn your water back on, just like that. You see, it's already like, that's already a little bit of gray with some of the, the water, the sediment in the water. And there we go. Now my water is on and it's going through that filter just fine. And here we go. So there, now you've seen how to change out the, the water or the filter bowl on your, uh, the sediment filter on your, your water filter there. So now you know. In the future, don't use tools, hand tighten these things only, and make sure you lube up your O-ring. But that should go without saying. If you have any questions about this or any other real estate related content, you can always give us a call 907-885-0316. You can also reach out to us on our website, www.fbxhomesearch.com. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.